Apple ransomware, free encryption for all the website, malicious fonts, and more, all coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for March 9th, 2016, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. So much news this week, and I'm just going to say one thing before I start. Google is back in the lead for being the germinating roots of Skynet. Search Google and Go if you want to know what I'm talking about. Nobody knows yet how the code was snuck into transmission 2.90. That's a BitTorrent client for OS X. But if you're running it, upgrade to 2.92. The 2.90 version was stuffed with the KeyRanger ransomware, says Macworld, the first official ransomware attack on Apple. Woo! Ransomware is hard to catch, and frankly, most OS X users don't use antivirus tools anyway. How? Uh, Palo Alto Networks, which traced the infection back, notes that the KeyRanger application was signed with a valid Mac app certificate, which uh, means it can sneak past Apple's gatekeeper. That certificate has since been revoked. Palo Alto also notes that the ransomware does its best to encrypt files stored on Apple's time machine. Ouch. Remember, in your 3, 2, 1 backup system, make sure one of those backups is offline so that in case you do have a particularly gnarly piece of ransomware, it doesn't encrypt everything in your networked universe. Ransomware is getting nasty, and while this attack asked for a single Bitcoin to unlock your data, around $400 today, remember that hospital in LA that paid $17,000 to decrypt its data after spending days with its medical records completely locked down. Ever try to run a hospital without medical records? Patch Tuesday, people. Update your software and make sure auto updates are turned on for the operating system security and frankly, everything else on the systems of the people you provide tech support for. Why am I mentioning this? Patch Tuesday was yesterday and Microsoft, Adobe, Chrome, oh, Google, and everybody else are hammering hard on security issues on a regular basis. And if you don't update, you don't get the benefits of those fixes. Worse yet, if your AV or anti-malware isn't automatically downloading updates, you're pretending you're secure when actually you're not nearly as secure as you could be. I know you know this, you're a hoopy fruit. It's just a reminder to remind everybody else whose systems you work on or with or those folks that call you up for the occasional moment of tech support. My personal favorite patch this patch Tuesday, security update for graphic fonts to address remote code execution. That's Microsoft Security Bulletin MS16-026 critical. Attack fonts, people, or attack by fonts. Makes the whole idea of attacking via light bulb seem kind of cool in comparison. Fonts, insecure fonts. Really? At 9.04 a.m. GMT yesterday, the Let's Encrypt Certificate Authority issued its million certificates as the EFF just three months and five days after the beta of the service launched. If you're not familiar, Let's Encrypt is a free automated open certificate authority set up so that anybody can get a trusted certificate to get their transport layer security on their website at zero cost. That's the thing that makes the S in HTTPS possible. The certs are now accepted by all major browsers. Let's Encrypt was co-founded by the EFF, Mozilla, and researchers from the University of Michigan. Akamai and Cisco, quote, provided significant financial support for the launch, says the EFF. There's a ton of new sponsors funding the project, and frankly, I am all for free tools that make the internet more secure. Way to go, EFF. Our featured comment today comes from Marquise Richardson, who, in response to ThreatWire Security Tip 1, VPN says, unfortunately, this is the internet. A broken system of out-of-date, unpatched machines using broken security or none at all. A world where all DNS lookups should have been encrypted by default 20 years ago, but aren't. A world where you can encrypt all you want, but often forget about the hundreds of trusted certificates in your browser. Thanks for the comment, Marquise. Not the most cheerful comment I've seen in a while. And the underlying idea is that, hey, not only are we responsible for security, but all of the agencies that work to make the internet possible have to work together to bring security up to a higher level, which usually pisses somebody off, which makes it harder to move forward, but it's got to be done. Got any thoughts on today's stories? Leave them right down below. And a huge thanks to each and every one of you that supports ThreatWire by contributing via patreon.com slash ThreatWire. Just pennies an episode on your part, keeps the show going, completely independent, ad-free, and we may even feature your adorable fur babies just like these ones in our next episode. Aww. I still want pictures of people's favorite hardware. You can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at ThreatWire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.